This is your Barbados Today evening news update for Monday, October 25. Nine COVID-related deaths were recorded Sunday as the current outbreak, said to be fueled by the Delta variant, continues its unrelenting impact. The deceased included five females aged 54, 59, 61, 64, and 65, and four males aged 62, 65, 71, and 93. Of these, two persons, one male and one female, were fully vaccinated and seven were unvaccinated. Their deaths bring the number of persons who have succumbed to the virus to 139. On Sunday, 247 new positive coronavirus cases were confirmed from the 1,255 tests conducted by the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory. The new positives comprise 49 persons who are under the age of 18 and 198 who are 18 years and older. There are 788 people in isolation facilities and 4,952 in home isolation. Overall, Barbados has recorded 15,588 confirmed cases of COVID-19. Quick action by a minibus driver averted a potential disaster after his vehicle caught fire at Hastings Christ Church this evening. The driver of B318, Wayne Jordan, was transporting 15 passengers on Spikeston to Oystens when the incident occurred. He immediately ensured the safety of his passengers and then rushed to save the vehicle. I was just coming out the road from Spikeston. And when I turned by the garrison, I saw the fire, so I just stopped the van and tell the people to get out quick and I'll try to out it. It's just a um, break lines like it, just break, and break flow is what caused the problem. Uh, any injuries? No, no, not injuries. How many people were in here? How many passengers? Yeah, about 15. All right, so uh, it's just to try to just get them out quick and just try to out it. That's all. You were on road to? Oysters. From Spikes on the Oysters. Um, and I do, I do it happening. Were you fearful for your life or for yeah, their life? No, 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 no. I just worry about them. So once, as soon as I told them to get out, they just got up quick. So you are seeing flames or smoke? What I flames, got... flames was coming out when they, when they stopped. So I just rushed quick to out it. Acting leading fire officer Gregory Clark and his team quickly responded to the incident. We responded to a media bus fire. Uh, approximately 1824 is when we received the call we quickly re re responded and when we arrived on scene we saw one minibus with smoke coming from the right side rear tire we quickly brought the fire under control and there was no major damage to the vehicle and uh, no one was injured Barbados' Roof to Reefs program has again received praise for its climate mitigation goals. This time around, it has come from Executive Director of the Green Climate Fund, Dr. Yannick Glimerick, who described the program as a model for other countries across the world. Dr. Glimerick, who was in Barbados on a brief three-day visit, was taken on a tour of the Bridgetown sewage treatment plant and the island's west coast. He spoke to members of the media while on tour. It's a unique opportunity for the Green Climate Fund to better understand the vision of Barbados for low emission climate resilient development. We are indeed extremely interested in the roof to reef approach because it could serve as a model to a number of countries on how to integrate water, land, agriculture, energy in a, in a consolidated approach. And so for me this visit is worth gold because you can spend hundreds of hours reading about something. Nothing replaced actually meeting real person and having uh, direct contact uh, with uh, project uh, uh, champions. Government officials present at the tour included the Minister and the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Investment, Marsha Caddo, the Minister of Maritime Affairs and the Blue Economy, Kurt Humphrey, and the Minister and the Ministry of Water Resources, Charles Griffith, and Chief Agricultural Officer, Keely Holder. Cattle said the issue of climate vulnerability were extremely important for countries like Barbados. She pointed out that Barbados was one of the top water-scarce countries in the world and the climate crisis is making the drought situation far worse. So we have the issue of being able to connect um, the water sector issues to the fact that we also have an ag agriculture sector that requires water. Um, we also have a water sector that, as you heard, um, also draws heavily um, on the energy sector. It's one of the highest users of energy. And so we have to be able to make sure that we have renewable energy 
that is affordable for the sector um, and is affordable for the entire country to use. So the, the, the relationship between water and energy and agriculture and land, all of these things we're grappling with in the context of the climate crisis. The Green Climate Fund, um, together with um, the five C's, which is our um, CARICOM Climate Change Center, um, has been one of our very strong partners. And I'll tell you why. We know um, that in grappling with all of these issues and all the vulnerabilities um, that Barbados faces, that we simply can't afford to use debt and further debt um, to be able to respond to a crisis that we didn't create. Executive Director of the Caribbean Community Climate Change Centre, Dr. Colin Young, revealed that the centre is currently working together with the Barbados government, the Barbados Water Authority and the GCF on a multi-million dollar project. It's a $45 million project, uh, $27 million is funded by the Green Climate Fund and 17.6 by the Barbados Water Authority. And the project is aligned with the vision and plans of the government of Barbados in achieving water resilience in the water sector. And uh, it is also, we're also going to be working with the government for another project called the Triar Cruise that is also tied into the vision uh, of Barbados in terms of improving resilience in the uh, wastewater sector. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news in Jamaica, controversial church leader Dr. Kevin Smith was killed in a major accident this morning while on his way to being charged with murder and other offenses. Smith was arrested last Sunday after an alleged ritual took place on the compound of his church. Two people were killed during the alleged ritual. More on this report from Television Jamaica. Constable, who it said was uh, uh, transporting the, the, the pastor to... Kingston to be formally charged. Uh, we understand from Stephanie Lindsay that about somewhere about 9:30, uh, while they were taking him into Kingston, um, there was an accident. They're not sure how the accident happened, but uh, the car got in an accident, and he, um, the, the, the car crashed. The officer, three officers, two are now critical in the Spanish Hospital. One succumbed to his injuries. But still, the Stephanie says it's too early for her to say how the accident happened. The past, as we said before, was being transported to Kingston to be formally charged by the police, by the MID. On the international front, the United Nations today warned that greenhouse gas concentrations hit a record last year and the world is way off track in capping rising temperatures. We get the details from Reuters Television. A World Meteorological Organization report show that carbon dioxide levels in 2020 has risen more than the average rate over the last decade. Secretary General Bateri Tales said this could result in a 2.5 to 3 degrees Celsius temperature rise. That's around 37 degrees Fahrenheit, rather than 1.2 to 2 degrees, a target that was made in the 2015 Paris Agreement. And last time when we saw uh, such high concentrations of uh, carbon dioxide, it was uh, around 3 to 5 million years from now. And, and then there, there was an estimate that the temperatures were 2 to 4 degrees higher than today, and the sea level was uh, 20, 10 to 20 meters uh, higher than today. So this is demonstrating already this current uh, level of uh, carbon, carbon dioxide uh, is, uh, is too high. 
carbon dioxide can remain in the atmosphere for centuries. So even though the emission rate dipped during lockdowns in 2020, the report confirmed it did not have any discernible impact on the atmospheric levels of greenhouse gases and the growth rates. The report also flagged concerns about the ability of the ocean and land to absorb roughly half of CO2 emissions. These so-called carbon sinks should act as a natural buffer for dramatic temperature increases. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.